Welcome to the Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist with an interest in all things anti-aging. Regular viewers of the channel will know I've been prattling on about turning 50 for months now, and that day has finally arrived. And I'm feeling pretty good about it because I think I'm in potentially better shape in terms of energy, outlook, and how I feel about myself than I've ever been. Over the last five years, I've tried devices, lotions, potions, clinical treatments, supplements, and more in the name of aging well, particularly when it comes to my skin. And as I reach a major chronological milestone, I thought I'd set out what I've learned so far from skincare to diet, exercise, and mindset. Each of those is a work in progress. I am no expert, just someone who's extremely curious about how to age well so I can look and feel good for as long as possible and help others to do the same. And so I ask a lot of questions, I do a lot of research, and I'm gonna link in the description to some of the books written by doctors and scientists that I've learned the most from, along with all the products I'm talking about today. So here it is for you now, my anti-aging routine at 50. So I should say that every time I do a video on my anti-aging routine, I always get at least one wag who leaves a comment like this one. And frankly, some would say I have it coming. But whereas at 45, I was panicking over every line and sign of sagging with a goal of not looking my age, in the last year or so, I've reached the view that there is probably lots more I could do to look younger. I could have fillers, I could have an eye lift. I could have CO2 laser resurfacing on my forehead. I could have a fat transfer on my cheeks. And you know, maybe I will do one or all of these things one day, but I don't feel the need right now because a little voice within tells me that agonizing over every line is not helpful. And my focus should instead be on a skincare routine that supports my skin health and volume and a lifestyle that helps me age well from within. And that will ultimately do more, I think, to preserve my skin and well-being in the long term. Because I've also come to realize it is completely disingenuous to talk about anti-aging skincare without saying that you can try every treatment under the sun and you will not see natural looking, healthy, youthful skin if you aren't keeping active and eating well. So what eating well looks like for me is following more of a Mediterranean diet that's rich in vegetables, salads, fruits, nuts, fish. I eat a little meat too and healthy fats like virgin olive oil. That said, I have a really sweet tooth and so the biggest challenge for me has been to cut back on sugar still a work in progress, because I've learned we need to focus on balancing our blood sugar levels for good health. That's because it's the sudden spikes in glucose that come with carbohydrate overload and sugary snacks and drinks, even fruit juice, that can accelerate aging and the negative effects of aging. And there is actually so much we can do about that without going to extremes and turning into cavemen. Last week, I mentioned this book. And I'm going to flag it often because it is life-changing and also offers really achievable diet advice that doesn't mean cutting lots out. I've bought it for family members, I've told friends to buy it, and it's linked in the description. It's called Glucose Revolution. It's by biochemist Jesse Inchaus, and it's an easy-to-read guide to how food impacts your health and straightforward changes we can make to our diet to balance our blood sugar and reduce the risks from age-related disease. Doing that will also have a visible impact on our skin and our whole body and is the most positive change we can make head to toe. Take a look at any of your favorite anti-aging skincare influencers, and what you will probably be looking at is lifestyle, way beyond the serums and devices. So that's the first point I wanted to make. I don't have a perfect diet by any stretch of the imagination, but I've taken on board a lot of the tips in this book. I've lost four pounds since Christmas as a result. I also drink a lot of water and I don't eat until mid-morning and I stop eating after dinner. So I'm giving my body around 15, 16 hours of rest and recovery every day. Now for my skincare routine. Well, for the past few years, it's loosely revolved around the same types of products with a few tweaks. I've used the same basic cleanser for years, which is this really simple, non-stripping, non-irritating, inexpensive CeraVe foaming facial cleanser, which I use every night with a face cloth to give my face a good clean and remove all traces of makeup, which it does brilliantly. 
In the mornings in the shower, I use this inexpensive, equally brilliant, low pH, good morning gel cleanser. Uh, and that, and it is foaming by the way, and I use that to wash my face. And it includes tea tree, so it's enlivening, but again, totally non-irritating and does a great job of helping keep my skin clear without dehydrating it. Then most mornings, though not every day, probably about four days a week, I use this vitamin C serum from one of my favorite skincare companies, Geek and Gorgeous. They go a long way to stabilizing the serum by making it in small batches. And I interviewed their founder, Judith Ratz, on this channel, who explains the process brilliantly here. But basically, your vitamin C serum should be clear. If it's yellow or brownish, it has oxidized and isn't gonna do its job, which is to offer environmental protection as an antioxidant and potentially help improve and guard against hyperpigmentation. Now, not everyone is convinced of the benefits of topical vitamin C, but I think personally, it helps keep my skin healthy and glowing. To preserve its freshness, you keep this serum in the fridge and distill it into a smaller bottle. And I just use a few drops on damp skin. This Sea Glow formula also contains ferulic acid and I think it's the best around at the lower cost end of the market. I'll link to everything I use in the video description below and I'll include prices too so you can see what's what. And you just need to hit show more to see it and if I have discount codes for anything I will include them there as well. After vitamin C in the mornings I just moisturize and then add sunscreen. My moisturizing products can change because I test a lot of different ones out but I like to use something that contains growth factors or peptides which can act as messengers within our skin to boost our cell productivity. So I've been using Calisim's multi-action cream twice daily for a couple of months now. I talked about it in this video here. If you want more information about how the growth factors are sourced and how the conditioned media they're contained in works on our hair and skin. I felt the multi-action cream balanced out my skin, improved my skin health and hydration. It also helps reduce pigmentation, but it's expensive. So I will use it or something similar in cycles where I go through a few months of treating my skin with a more advanced moisturizer that contains growth factors like this, and then take a break to save some money and also rest my skin. So right now, I'm still using the multi-action cream in the evening, but in the morning, I use this very inexpensive Ole Regenerous Collagen Peptide Hydrating Moisturizer, which is fragrance-free, lightweight, but keeps my skin hydrated and has strong consumer ratings. And for years before starting this channel, I used simple, unfragranced Ole moisturizers, and I think they're great for combination skin like mine. And you can nearly always find an offer on them somewhere to source them really cheaply too. In fact, I got mine half price. I'm testing out an eye cream at the moment with peptides, and I've literally just started using it, and it's not on the market yet. So watch this space. I will run a review on that once it's launched and I've been using it for a couple of months. Finally, in the mornings, I add sunscreen and I've used the same one, this Resist Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid from Paula's Choice for years now. It affords a great level of protection as an SPF 50. It glides on, it's non-sticky, non-greasy, and it doesn't clog your pores. I'm gonna to talk to a dermatologist about sunscreen in a couple of weeks time on the channel because although we think of it as just a boring basic, it's really quite underestimated in terms of its visible anti-aging benefits for our skin. That's my morning routine. Makeup wise, I'll link to what I use in the description as well, but it's nearly all supermarket, grocery store brands like Max Factor. As you could probably tell, I'm not exactly gifted when it comes to applying makeup. So for now, I just keep it cheap and simple, but I'm sure there are products out there that would do much more for my skin. And so that's maybe something I'll find an expert to help me with. My routine varies only slightly in the evenings when I start by washing with the CeraVe cleanser. Then instead of vitamin C, I'll use a retinoid. Again, just around four nights a week. I like to give my skin a few nights off. I stepped down from using tretinoin just after Christmas because after 10 months of using it daily, my skin was still sensitive, it was often dry, and I felt the negatives were starting to outweigh the positives that I'd seen in the early months when I felt it had been great for clearing my skin, tightening enlarged pores, and reducing fine lines around my eyes. So I've been off it for two months now, 
And if we look at this before picture from last summer when I'd been using tretinoin for about six months and one taken just the other day, so two months after switching to retinaldehyde, and you can see my skin still looks as smooth, but um, the redness and sensitivity in my cheeks is calming down and I don't have outbreaks of dryness around my eyes or under my mouth anymore. So I followed the advice from Dr. Chen, she's been on this channel a few times now, and believes prescription retinoids are best used for a fixed period, and then you can step down to high quality over-the-counter retinol or retinaldehyde. I use A-game retinaldehyde serum in strength 10 from Geek and & Gorgeous. And retinal is a direct precursor to retinoic acid and tretinoin, is topical retinoic acid. That means tretinoin gets to work faster on your skin, but it's also really putting your skin through its paces because it's acting directly on the skin and requires no conversion. And some people just struggle to tolerate it. It's not for everyone. And I find the middle ground of using a good quality retinal like this gives me similar benefits without the downsides. And that's just my personal experience. Others swear by tretinoin long-term and you just have to go with what your own skin tells you. I wouldn't rule out going back to a lower strength, say 0.025% tretinoin for a li limited period of time again, just to give myself another boost. But I don't feel personally that it's something I want to use every day for life or not at this point in time. So I apply a pea-sized amount of retinal mainly over my T-zone and then just taking it lightly around my crow's feet and cheeks and then I apply moisturizer. Currently the Callison multi-action cream in the evenings across my T-zone and forehead, jaw and neck but most nights I have also been applying under my eyes and over my cheeks the Adipo Active Face Cream designed to stimulate fat renewal. Now I've done a lot on this cream on this channel, having interviewed its founder twice and I did this three month review video as well which recaps on how it works and includes a few before and after pictures. Personally I believe the Adipo Cream has, after nearly six months of use, improved the volume in my cheeks and visibly so. I think I saw most benefits in the first three months of use and really the first two bottles that I used and I don't think my results have moved much since then. For other viewers they've said it takes a full six months to get the best results, I've had viewers that saw results within weeks and I've had some that have said they've had no results at all. Now its maker himself says you don't have to use the cream long term and that once you've stimulated fat renewal and, and see improved volume you should be able to stop using the cream and see those results continue for a period of time. So I'm going to stop using Adipo now and I'll probably return to it every now and then to give myself a bit of a volume boost unless a cheaper alternative comes along. There is something called volufiline um, which works similarly but isn't quite the same so I may well check that out at some point too. So for those keen to see a before and after comparison at the six month stage let me show you a picture of myself taken last summer just before I started using Adipo and then this one from last week. I've lost four pounds in weight over that period but my facial volume has held up and my skin is in good health despite stopping tretinoin and I think I'm seeing the benefits of a scaled back simplified routine. The only other thing I add in is a tiny amount of a Vino Daily Moisturising Body Lotion at night and I use around it around my eyes a little like you would use Vaseline or eye patches just to form a moisture trapping barrier and I use it on my lips as well. And for me, when the chips are down and I'm experiencing any kind of dry skin or irritation, this is the skin saviour. It was first recommended by my kid's doctor when they were very little and had dermatitis and it's it was the only thing that got rid of that and I've always kept it in the house ever since. With glycerin, colloidal oatmeal and paraffin oil, it's a great locker in of moisture and a skin soother. When it comes to devices, I haven't really used any in any meaningful way on my face since last summer because I wanted to see what skincare alone could do. And surprisingly, my skin has held up really quite well. There are a few devices I keep around though and still use from time to time, particularly I've started again more recently. So I have a red light mask which I forget about and then we'll go through a little run of using two or three times a week for a few weeks to give myself a boost. Um, with any kind of device I would recommend you give your skin rest periods because 
that can often be when you see the results unfold and you're also just giving your skin a chance to recover and, and not be overstimulated or stressed. I have two microcurrent devices in my bathroom right now. There's this even skin solar powered roller that I run up my neck and chin once or twice a week just to help with toning. I just use that for like a minute or so really quickly. And I also have the Zip GX model which uses both nano current and microcurrent and it's very gentle on your skin which is why I prefer it to the new face which I used almost daily for nearly a year and I did feel it was quite help for, helpful for toning um, under my chin in particular but I just got fed up of zapping myself with a strong current so I've recently started using the zip over my whole face just once a week and just on damp skin rather than using a hyaluronic acid serum. That is um, less than the recommended frequency, but a bit like the even skin roller, I'm just really giving my skin a bit of a pep up, stimulating the muscles, getting a bit more oxygen into the skin. So it's a bit like a weekly facial. I think these devices can be helpful for toning, but I wouldn't use them daily. Again, just so you're resting your skin and letting any benefits unfold. You know, I think we can get a little bit carried away with all these devices out there. I know I certainly have. And that's why I've cut back a bit on use to build in rest time. I've also talked about the risk of facial fat loss from radio frequency devices and treatments on this channel, but those treatments can also deliver some really impressive results. So I think we just need to be aware of the risks and use caution. I've used Even Skin's Lumo radio frequency device successfully at home without problems in the past, and I would do another course of treatment with it under my chin and around my jowls if I felt I had a buildup of fat there or sagging, but sticking to a lower setting um, and strength of radio frequency. The only other thing I use for periods of time is this little Venus eye pen, which is red light paired with vibration. It's an anti-aging device for the skin around your eyes, but I use it to relieve fluid buildup and puffiness around my eyes and also to help with dryness in my actual eyes because the mix of the warmth from the light and the vibration helps to unclog the oil glands around my eyes and keep my eyes better hydrated. So I use this essentially instead of heat pads and I find it really helpful. Exercise is something I could do more of, but because I have a dog, I walk briskly for at least 30 minutes every day and I do five minutes on an elliptical um, climber several times a week. I could and should definitely do more in terms of resistance training though to build up my muscles. So that's another work in progress. I've got a few resistance bands, so it's just a case of using them. Yeah. As far as supplements go, last week in my video, I talked about my experience of taking longevity supplement NMN for a month, along with TMG and Berberine. So you can watch that here. I'll continue with a relatively small amount of NMN for the foreseeable future, uh, taking 250 milligrams a day. And I also take a daily berberine capsule after my last meal of the day, which helps balance blood sugar, or theoretically it does anyway. I take 4,000 micrograms of vitamin D alongside vitamin K2 each day. Vitamin D is such an essential supplement for all of us. 4,000 micrograms is the maximum recommended dose in the UK and I ease off in the summer and spring and just take that a few days a week. But it does help me massively with energy levels in the winter and I think staying well too because it supports immunity and is of course good for our bone health too. I also take this collagen powder daily. I'm going to do a separate video on collagen supplements because there have been some encouraging recent studies that have convinced me to take it daily. And I do feel it's supporting my skin and my hair as well. Both feel significantly better hydrated and healthier. And I can feel it on my hands, not just my face. And after watching a very well-known doctor talk about his own brand of collagen powder, I studied the ingredients and found almost an exact replica, but for way less money. And it's this Code Age Multi-Collagen 
protein powder peptides and it's an all-in-one bone broth and collagen supplement and I love it. I just add half a scoop of it each day to either my coffee or my breakfast and I think it's making a big difference. Again, I'll include average prices so you can see what's what in the video description. I eat quite a lot of fish and um, flaxseed every day so I don't supplement with omega-3 at the moment but it's another really important one. So that is pretty much where I'm at when it comes to trying to stay energized and look and feel youthful and vibrant. Another big contributor to how we feel is of course mindset and again it's something I've really been focusing more on in the last year. I definitely think we are what we believe ourselves to be and that we have to watch what we're telling ourselves. So I'm slowly trying to chip away at the limitations I've put on myself and instead try to remind myself daily of how much I already have to be grateful for, firstly, which helps put you in a better frame of mind. And secondly, that my age is no barrier personally or professionally to achieving my goals. And so I'm expanding my horizons of what I think is possible for me. Crucially, I've also stopped criticizing myself because I really was my own worst critic and it's just so draining. A positive mindset, a mind that expects good outcomes, it absolutely shows on our faces and in every aspect of our lives. And so I find it's really worth taking a bit of time out each day just to be still, remind myself I'm doing okay. I have good intentions and a strong sense of purpose when it comes to learning and sharing helpful information. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments and I'd also love to hear what areas you'd like me to expand on in future, what you enjoy most from this channel. As always, thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, then by hitting like and subscribe, you can help this video reach more people and help the channel to grow. For now, take care and I'll see you next time.